What's true of individual scientists can be true of the scientific community as a whole. For decades, eugenics, the effort to breed better people by applying the principles of Darwinian biology to society, was embraced as legitimate by America's leading scientists. Critics of eugenics, meanwhile, were roundly stigmatized as anti-science and religious zealots. Just looking at a single cell, all of its functions are interrelated. If you take any one of them away, you'll lose the cell. That's why when Craig Venter and his team um, recently synthesized a bacterial chromosome, uh, I think a million base pairs of DNA, they started with a cell. They borrowed a cell from nature and put their synthetic chromosome inside it to boot it up. You know, there was a single base pair error in their synthesis. One base pair out of a million was wrong, and it wouldn't work. And uh, these early scientists then praised God, not simply in their private letters, but in their scientific works. You look at Copernicus, and there is explicit acknowledgement. He is fascinated with the glory of God uh, in his writings about uh, astronomy. And uh, Johannes Kepler, same way. Isaac Newton, same way. Galileo. Galileo was uh, a bit of a, more of a rebel, but he professed to be a Christian. All of these people were working in a worldview that was heavily influenced by Christianity, even if some of them were not uh, theologically completely on board where I would like them to be. Uh. Dawkins concedes in The Blind Watchmaker. He starts the book out by saying, biology is the study of complicated things that give the appearance of having been designed for a purpose. But of course, he goes on to say that uh, Darwinian evolution is a better explanation. But you know, it looks like it was designed. If most of our DNA is junk, then Darwinian evolution is true and intelligent design is false. This is also the logic used by Dawkins and various other atheists. Second premise, most of our DNA is junk. Therefore, Darwinian evolution is true and intelligent design is false. The second premise, however, is false. Most of our DNA is not junk. It doesn't mean that there isn't some junk there. But this uh, dogma that most of it is, is junk it simply doesn't hold. Therefore, it does not follow. His argument does not follow that Darwinian evolution is true and intelligent design is false. So I'm a high school student, let's say I take them to the OED and I get their meanings back. Quietus is death and Bodkin's a little knife. Now I know what these words are doing in this English sentence. Well, the parallel to, to genetic words is really pretty strong. We take our DNA from our newly sequenced species to the genetic dictionary, we find the words that have associated meanings, orphans don't. These are unique genetic words that have never been seen before. And because they've never been seen before, they have no matches. The, the famous money quote um, that was, came out actually right before the book was even released was this. And Hawking, you know, I mean, literally, I mean, I think every language on the planet had a news story about this, and it came out. This is what Hawking said. He said, because there's a law such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Spontaneous creation is the reason there's something rather than nothing, why the universe exists, why we exist. Now, yeah. Now, like I said, there are certain options not available to the materialist in the 21st century. Like Carl Sagan's The Cosmos is All That Is or Ever Was or Ever Will Be, that's very implausible now given current cosmology. And so for the materialist, they have to account for a cosmic beginning.